Hey friends, Mike and Jess here. And welcome to Regeneration Nation TV. We just got done watching the video, Britain's most hated subculture from Jimmy the Giant. Uh, very eye-opening, eye for sure. It was very eye-opening, for sure. Um, definitely go show this video some love on Jimmy's channel. We've got links for his channel, this original video, in our description, in our pinned comments. Um, yeah, if you have any more videos like this, um, this one came to us from our other reaction a few weeks ago, um, UK football chants, like most entertaining or best UK football chants. Yeah. I forget the name of that video. It was it was awesome. It yeah. was hilarious. This is a different tone. So, uh, yeah, be ready. Be ready. And uh, let's get into this. Let's do it. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. A senior officer Squarespace. said the video showed the awful callousness of the hooligans. Police had to intervene to control the fans. Disorders on the rise. A story of bitter rivalry between their supporters. The West Makes Ham. it one of the world's most deadly football tragedies. This small faction of society has been seen as one of the most controversial subcultures in all of Europe. The football hooligan. Uh, it's not just the football, it's a whole subculture. Do you remember that movie? Green Street Hooligans with uh, Elijah Wood. A and, little bit, yeah. Uh, what's his name? The dude from Sons I of Anarchy. Was in it. Huh? Dude from Sons of Anarchy. It just showed him. Oh, Charlie Hunnam? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Okay, yeah. yeah. Europe. The football hooligan. Uh, it's that not was just a great the football, movie. it's a whole subculture so and scene. And for the first time ever, I was, I was accepted. Exactly the same as us to go to the match with our boys. I mean, us and have a good scrap, you know what I mean? You don't hurt at the time because your adrenaline keeps you going. Well, before the football hooligan became its own subculture with its own fashion and attitude, violence in football has been there ever since the beginning. Around the 13th century, football started to become a sport. Two neighbouring rival towns would assemble what was pretty much an army of men in what was referred to as mob football. Between the years 1314 and 1666, over 30 football bands were put in place, with the main issue being the violence and the rioting that would come with it. But you see, gradually, football would begin to change. Around the late 1800s, football had kind of slipped into the hands of the gentleman. And with that was the introduction of modern football, with a rule set called the Cambridge Rules. It was now no longer a sport of the rioting common folk, and instead the sport of the ruling elite. Okay. But yeah, I've heard of the Cambridge the Rules. The first recorded instance of football hooliganism was in 1885, where Preston North End faced Aston Villa. The teams got upset and just started whacking each other with sticks and having a fight. A handful of instances like this would happen, but then England would go to war twice. Hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight. Post-war Britain was a very different place than before. In the 50s, we'd start to see a rise in these young youth subcultures, such as the Teddy Boys. By the 60s, you had the mods and rockers, as well as skinheads and hippies. Some of these different subcultures would be violent towards each other. They broke away from traditional British values and rebelled against British cultural norms. Well, I suppose I'll be married. I don't want to get married, but I suppose I will. At the same time, the UK was experiencing a massive wave of immigration post-World War II, with the change in demographics brought with it racial tension and violence. And so, in this time, the English identity was in flux. And as well in the 60s, mandatory military service for young men came to an end. And so, young working class men had very few places to let out their aggression. But then there was football. <laughs> single week you and the boys could get together and go and watch your team play this was an opportunity to get together with the boys and drink and occasionally get into a scrap with the opposing fans and what started as just a bit of fun towards the late 60s and into the early 70s oh had really evolved into a class of people who were typically white working class men who would assemble these gangs associated with a football team these gangs would become very organized and referred to themselves as firms arsenal had the herd millwall had the millwall bushwhack West Ham had the intercity firm. Each team would start to develop their own firm and they would become feared. That would be crazy, man. A lot of people were wondering how this started. Some people believe it's in part due to the fact that the elder generation stopped going to football games. As they were becoming wealthier, there were other things for them to do and football stopped being this family affair that everyone would go and watch and really became a young man's pastime. And so with no elders to keep the young fans in check, they became more aggressive and more violent. Hooligans developed this deep pride in where they came from. A lot of it came down to respect. If they didn't feel respected, they would prove themselves by fighting the opponents. You know what I mean? If 
you ain't, if you ain't doing it on the terraces, you're going to be doing it somewhere else. It's just this is that, that violent streak. No, it's not a violent streak. It's being proud. Being proud of your man. Yeah, don't, yeah, being proud of your man. I'm being fucking don't let people take the piss out of you. The attitude of most hmm. of these hooligans weren't really to go out and seriously hurt the opposition, but rather to just have some drinks, go watch football, and have a good scrap. All we're going for is a good game of football, a good punch up, and a good piss up. That's all about Millwall. It was a break from their monotonous lives. Now, when they'd come back to work on Monday, they'd all have stories to tell. Like how Barry took on five geezers with a pint in his hand without ever spilling a drop. Every <laughs> week, they'd go out fighting for their city, their town, their club. It gave them a purpose and an identity. When are you going to settle down and get married? Settle down and get married? Well, getting married, you're restricted, and you can't travel away with a team you love and love like, you know? And I was going to get married, but I knocked it on the head, all over Millwall. But very quickly, tell me about it. Things started to get out of hand. Kidding, Before kidding. we go further this video, I want to give a shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is the number one tool for building and developing your own website. Whatever it is you do, you might run a small business, you might be an art designer, whatever. It's so important to have a website that really reflects the quality of your brand. And luckily, Squarespace is here to do that for you. With tons of templates to choose from, you can easily customize any of them to perfectly fit your brand. And additionally, add in tons of features like email marketing, e-commerce, and appointment scheduling. I'm personally working on a website myself right now for a top secret project. And I've got to say, I actually enjoy the process of using Squarespace. It's not only cost effective and easy, but it's actually quite fun. So be sure to head over to squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. When we react to a video and they have like a mid roll ad, I feel like it's right to let it play. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the least we could do reacting to one of their videos. So it's yeah. Extra support. Go Go show Squarespace some love. Yeah. 150 were arrested well away from Stamford Bridge when they ran riot on the London Underground. Into the 70s and by 1974, Manchester United were relegated into the second division. Fans on the field again, spilling over from the corner on my right. And I suspect that uh, we shall see the referee calling the players off. Yes, he's taking them off. The Red Army I've never seen anything like that. Loads of stadiums all up and down oh the country. Gosh. That same year, a Bolton Wanderers fan stabbed a young Blackpool fan. Football hooliganism was getting out of control. Public sentiment was turning against football and starting to see it as a massive problem. So football organisers had to try and do something. They took measures to try and limit the crowd size. They segregated the home and the away fans with fences. But nothing was really changing. Up until then, football hooliganism was mainly just a problem in England. However, in the mid-50s, the European Cup was introduced and for the first time English football supporters had a chance to get the boys together, pack their lagers and head to war overseas. For Europe, the invading British mobs brought violence and destruction. For many of the hooligans, these were the most exciting times of their lives. It was kind of how I imagined the Vikings must have felt going out get into a country and just go an absolutely berserk. And with and this, is... they would spread what would become known as the English disease. Very quickly, issues started to spread abroad. In 1975, Leeds United were banned from playing football in Europe after their fans had an all-out riot after a game against Bayern Munich. Manchester United were banned after 1977 wow. after fans were rioting before, during, and after their cup-winning game against St. Etienne. But you see, football hooliganism wasn't just being contained to the football grounds, but the hooligans would start to develop more organized criminal behaviors, such as looting high-end fashion brands. This, in and of itself would develop a unique fashion for football hooligans as Gary and the boys would come back to England dressed in the finest after the football games. This fashion would be dubbed football casuals. It used to see a lot of the, the majority wow. of the fans wearing the shirts and then you get this small group of, of, of look like you no know, big big strong looking men they used to be the ones that sung the most as well you used to yeah. start the songs off and back in the day the only time you saw Stone Island was at a football match pretty much, I'd say. To the point where if you saw a group of lads wearing Stone Island and CP Company or something along them lines, they were fair game. Whilst every other football oh, fan wow. would just wear the wow. team's uniform, the football casuals become very distinct and able to detect. Wearing brands like Sergio Tacchini, Fila, Lacoste, Pringles, Stone Island and many others. They'd often have the skinhead buzz cut. These lads would be dressed to the absolute nines every single I football game and then movie. get into 
Really? Mm -mm. No, nope. now that, that I'm movie? seeing it, like bits and pieces of it, Dude, no, I, it I know such the a name great of it. Movie. It was such a great it. movie. I don't know how like historically accurate it was, but I just remember watching that movie and being like, wow, man, yeah. what a great movie. It was so heartbreaking by the end of it as well. Um, but it was also like just an amazing, like there were such, there were moments in there that were just like, man, like this is. This is incredible stuff. Another and one to add to the list then, because yeah, I gotta definitely watch want to watch it. We gotta watch that. Massive fights. Was really not too spark out. Who did you play football with? And casuals. Casuals? It would be in the 70s and the 80s. It would be considered the golden era of football hooliganism. The media coverage was in full swing. The UK was in a massive moral panic over football hooliganism. Things were starting to get more and more out of hand and they started to turn political. It was around the same time where large parts of the skinhead movement had been overtaken by far-right nationalist groups. Things like the National Front and the British Movement. These groups would lurch onto their more tribal mentality and patriotic nature and a subsection of hooliganism become linked to far-right extremism where organizations like the national front would deliberately try to recruit new members from football terraces. I do want to point out that Vice made a whole video on this and there's a lot of criticisms of that, saying that football firms tend to just represent the attitudes of the town they're from. So if a town is very right wing or very left wing, the hooligans will tend to represent that. And so football hooligans weren't inherently far right. That went through your window. Oh, that way yeah. 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 upstairs. I got, I got hit over the head with an iron bar. Either way, the British Dang. public was in full disarray. The middle classes of Britain had developed a very deep hatred for this subculture there were often working class people who were seen as out wreaking havoc on towns on a weekly basis. It was a massive moral panic and due to the sharp rise in unemployment in the 80s there was a deep resentment in the working class and you could see that in things like the miners strike and the Tottenham riots, there were deep tensions in Britain and football became the main vessel to channel that anger. Things were getting wow. pretty bad. Someone would need to come in and put an end to it. Bearing now Mrs Thatcher as Prime Minister. 1985 was considered the worst year ever for football hooliganism. There were a few key instances that would really push the Thatcher government to act. On the 13th of March, Millwall and Luton would face each other. 31 people were injured when Millwall fans went on the rampage before, during and after the match. Described as one of the worst nights of violence in British football, the Prime Minister is demanding action. And it turned into a riot that destroyed Jeez. Luton. 81 people were injured, 60 of those being police officers, 31 arrests were made. Fans tore up the stadium. They destroyed the town. They were smashing people's windows. Oh One police officer suffered gosh. a heart attack. They had to receive mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, all whilst being kicked in the head by football fans. But it oh would be on gosh. the 29th of May where disaster would strike. Oh my goodness. The Heysel Stadium in Brussels, the capital of Belgium, has been a sickening and bewildering sight. As a result, there is for certain serious injury when a wall collapsed and maybe worse. Liverpool played Juventus oh in the European gosh. Cup final at the Heysel Stadium, where 39 people would be crushed to death by a wall that collapsed as a result of fighting. Italian. I would like to say to all the English people that they are very famous in the world for their education and self-control and so on. We have now the proof that all over the continent, Everybody say, don't be like English you know what I see? After Brussels, the world shuts the door on English clubs. So Today, sad, the governing man. body, FIFA, registered their disgust over the events at Brussels by banning English clubs from all internationals. This ban lasted until 1990 and a year later for Liverpool to be unbanned. The UK had had enough. I wish we could get those responsible, get them before a court and stiff sentences so that they stop anyone else. Soccer violence has now reached the top of the political agenda. And so the Thatcher-led government set up a war cabinet to tackle football hooliganism. Along with the Popple wow. World Committee, many ideas were put forward and laws passed to try and tackle it. You had the Public Order Act in 1986, which permitted courts to ban fans from stadiums. The Football Spectators Act in 1989 banned convicted hooligans from attending matches internationally. Stadiums wow. were forced to make changes. They were no longer allowed standing sections. They had to have seats. Along with much tighter security, better quality turnstiles, and tickets were made much more expensive. Heisel and Hillsborough changed everything. Hillsborough more so than Heisel because it changed the design of stadiums. It's a kind of social cleansing of football, a deliberate pricing policy that has pushed 
hooliganism they thought to the back burner. But you see, the violence didn't stop wow, immediately. Man. The firms just got more organized and smarter and moved the violence out into the streets, where firms would become like militia groups, knowing how to ambush people with the locations they were in. These back streets, I knew uh, it were good for us because we knew where every back street, where they were going. Away things didn't know where they were going, but we we could. However, into the 90s, the English disease was scary, man. So scary. After the European ban was lifted, families actually started to attend football games again. Police presence had massively grown and they'd become much more equipped to deal with the problem. Hooligans were getting tougher and tougher sentences and violence did start to drop. I mean, I assume to know, like, I have a good guess, but I wonder how the players that are practicing every week and looking forward to showing off their skills felt about all of this. Yeah. Like, especially the ones being banned from even playing mm -hmm. during certain moments. It's it's crazy to think about. You have a group of people representing you on the world stage like that, and uh, you're, you're just trying to play. Yeah, a, a but it's sport. becoming dangerous. That's crazy. This is mind-boggling. People died going to a football game. It looked like a bomb went off. Oh, that's so the scary. sentences and violence did start to drop. There's over 4,000 Germans booked in for Europe this summer. You come and take us out with your top firm, then you take us on tour. As things started to really quiet down by the late 90s, by the early 2000s, a nostalgia grew for football hooliganism. There's nothing different about me. I'm just another bored male approaching 30 in a dead-end job who lives for the weekend. With films like The Football Factory, Green Street, The Firm, as well a very scared Danny Dyer did this show called The Real Football Factories. Mate, are you sure we're going to walk in this booze? We're going to end up getting ironed out by this little firm, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you seem sweet as, but it's early days yet, you know what I mean? I'm sure yeah. someone's going to glass me anyway. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> Bless him. Books were being books. <laughs> football hooligans became famous. A romanticization of this era really grew in the mid 2000s. The football casual aesthetic had become a staple in fashion and can still be seen today. But football hooliganism never went away entirely. But in Russia, they're trained, organized, and brutally violent. England arguably exported hooliganism abroad, where instead of having firms, they call them ultras. And it appears that they are far more violent and intense than most British firms. We all went there to show that the English are not hooligans. They're just posers. They're little girls. Russia seems to have this hatred against England, and they want to prove that they're better than us, which led to the UEFA riots in 2016 between Russia and England. And football wow. firms still exist, and there has been a bit of an effort to like organize these fights and make them a bit more legitimate, which personally I think is a pretty good idea. All of this has led many psychologists <laughs> oh and sociologists to study and pin down what causes football hooliganism. And, and hooliganism emerged when there were, were, were lots of uncertainties about identity, uh, uncertainties about place, you know, even uncertainty about about gender identities, you know, with the emergence of hippie cultures and new ways of, of doing masculinity. Um, not really knowing where you belong and what have you, so I was attracted to the togetherness as well of, of all the lads, you know. It felt normal, plus you felt as if you had a family. For the first time, probably felt like I belonged somewhere. At the core of what drives these men are the same exact things that drive men to protect their countries in war. It's a powerful energy that comes with it a lot of responsibility. When carefully nurtured and directed into something positive, it can be amazing. But when it's not, it can be terrible. The violence of English football fans brought about the death of 38 people and injuries to 454. If wow. you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here. What a well done video. Mm -hmm. um, usually when we watch videos like this, especially, you know, this young man, it looks like, you know, he probably wasn't around during some of those things that he's discussing. So there's usually people in the comments like, they got this wrong, they got this wrong, they got this a little bit, you know, backwards or whatever. So just let us know yeah. um, respectfully, like anything you wanna add to this conversation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, it was still a very well done video, very eye opening for me. It it's was very, yeah, I didn't even know that that was like a thing. Like I've seen people from England and they have the Lacoste wear and they have those uh, jumpsuits and they have the, the specific style, but I didn't know that it was it was labeled to football ho hooliganism. I didn't even know that that was a yeah. thing. And when Maybe I watched either. this video, there's a lot of things that have happened here, riots that have happened here. 
um, there's gangs everywhere you look. Um, but when they started to talk about they feel like they belong somewhere and there's like a family unit kind of thing, you kind of get to understand the inside of how a human feels. And I feel like it goes back to um, I, I never want to ruffle any feathers and I don't want to seem like I'm, I know what I'm talking about or anything, but just goes back to the family unit when you when you are raised under even if it's just your grandma and and she's raising you and she's loving you and she's giving you that place where you feel like you belong or when you have a, a mother and a father and raising your children is so important and staying in that family unit and and getting people to be raised and know that they can go and do something positive with the way that they feel and their passions about something I just feel like there that's what our world is missing there's a lot of those family units and there's a lot of those things where people are going around and having those casual relationships and children are coming from it and they didn't have that choice they didn't make that choice to be brought into the world but what happens is they don't have that strong family unit and they don't have that strong uh, sense of of belonging somewhere so they go out and try to find it the best way they can sometimes they go this way and sometimes they go that way and I feel like a lot of the times where they go this way they find that they belong somewhere, even if it is doing something bad, even if it is getting into hard crime and, and hurting someone else, they, they belong somewhere. So it's so dangerous when you can go this way or you can go that way, but I feel like that's what it stems from, is having that, that feeling of belonging, that human relation, that, that sense of love. and it's, It shows how important it is to us as humans. You, know? you have the, the soccer players, the football players themselves. Sorry, I'm American. I always say soccer. Yeah. It's just ingrained in me. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you have the football players themselves who find that with their fellow teammates, um, that camaraderie, that family. And then you have the fans who didn't get into those things, those group activities. Yeah. Um, and they find it whatever way that they can. And not only that, they have a lot of anger in them. There's a yeah. lot of things that you grow up with that nobody taught you how to deal with those emotions. We all do. And it, it's yeah. playing a sport. Like, it allows you to get out of that, get a lot of that pent-up aggression out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, that I've we went, when we first started dating, went to a football game. It was Florida versus Georgia. And when the game got out, I mean, you could tell during the game and, like, as it was ending – Tensions were were high, Very high. and uh, when it got let out, there was just a bunch of people getting jumped in the streets, and it was it was scary. Yeah. You know, for me taking you out on a, just a nice date. Yeah, I thought, and then it turning. That was the my way first that it did. experience with um, the Florida Georgia weekend here. That's a big thing, and there's been people that have died. There's been yeah. a Florida Georgia weekend where actually a couple I mean, people have died from the fights and how bad it gets. Yeah, that was the th the craziest thing that I've seen that night with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it was nothing on this scale. Yeah, it was nothing on this scale. wasn't organized at all. It no. just happened randomly. Yeah. And the organization of this is what's scary yeah. to me. It's like these they get really organized with it, mm -hmm. make plans. Yeah. And uh, that's that's when things you you've got to take precautions you and do because put rules once in you place. once you try to put things in place and add extra security and you put these these fences up and stuff and they know other ways around it because that's how organized they are they're like you do this but we're going to find this way to get around it that's even more scary because how do you control something like that that's so crazy yeah Oof. that was a that was an interesting video Definitely very eye-opening eye Nailed it. <laughs> All right, friends. We've got links for this original video. Go show us some love. we got it in, in our description and our pinned comments. Mm -hmm. Go and watch it in your own time. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Bye, friends. Peace. I'm not scared of your love, so show me it. Let me know.